So iPadOS 26 is just a few days away and I wanted to talk about it because for me, I don't know about you, but iPadOS 26 finally actually makes the iPad feel fun to use again. So let's talk about it. So Apple has a history of limiting the iPad's power, usually just through the software. And of course I can kind of see why, because you know, Apple also makes the Mac and in no world would they want to create a device that directly hurts the Mac. But you know, this is actually different and I mean really different. So take a look at this. Apple finally brought real like genuine Mac style multitasking to the iPad. And this isn't just the usual, you know, held back limited software we've seen for years. So by default, just like any other iPad, you can have each app open in a full screen mode. Uh, however, just by sliding on this little slider in the bottom corner, just like in previous years, uh, you now have access though to a completely flexible windowing system, which allows you to resize any app to any size, and you can put it anywhere on the screen. And not only that, Apple has integrated, you know, their, their traffic light style menu buttons from the Mac. And that's just going to make it, you know, even faster and easier to close, minimize and full screen apps. And, you know, they did also add the Mac action bar to the top and you can access it by just swiping down from the middle of the screen. And it gives you the ability to take shortcuts within different apps. But you know, the funny thing, and I've seen other people talk about this on YouTube is all iPad apps are designed for touch first. So I've never personally sort of found myself needing to take an action from the top. And plus for whatever reason, they uh, always have half the options grayed out. And so it's kind of just useless to use anyway, but okay. We have got to talk about the Files app next, because if you have ever tried using the Files app on the iPad, you were probably tempted to throw it across the room because the Files app sucks. But thanks to iPadOS 26, the Files app actually does get some meaningful upgrades and you can sort folders with different colors and icons. And that just makes things more fun. And I do suppose you could take advantage of it to, you know, turn it into something that can help you be more productive. But more importantly, iPadOS 26 brings this upgraded list view alongside adjustable uh, columns. And that will allow for a much more detailed, rich version of your files, very similar to the Mac. So something that I've done for a while now is take advantage of the desktop folder on the Mac. And so I'll save any kind of files that, you know, I, I use from device to device. I'll put it all on the desktop and that'll just make it easier to access from any device. Uh, well, this year, Apple has made that even easier to do because all you have to do is click on the folder, which in this case is the desktop folder, and you'll just drag it down to your dock. And then you can click on the folder and just like on the Mac, it will actually fan out all of the files that are in there and that'll just make it extremely quick to access. So at this point, you've probably noticed a bit of a theme with iPadOS 26 and that would be to make users more productive with the software. So let's talk about the new previews app on iPad. And really quickly, I do want to say, yes, this is the same previews app that has been on the Mac for as long as we can remember. And it has been brought to the iPad, but also the iPhone, which is interesting, but it's still special nonetheless. So on every iPad running iPadOS 26, you'll find the new preview app. And this app was originally designed for Mac so that you could view, edit, and write on PDFs. But thankfully it is now here on the iPad. And basically what it does is it just gives you the ability to, you know, view and edit PDFs without the need for a third party app. And because it is on iPad, it takes advantage of the Apple pencil markup feature. Now, as someone who does a lot of creative work, I use my iPhone to shoot a lot of footage. And as a matter of fact, every shot in this video was shot on iPhone. But when I saw that Apple was implementing a feature to both iPhone and iPad, which would allow you to change your audio input, I obviously got incredibly excited. So basically what this means is Apple is now giving you full control 
over how your iPhone or iPad records audio. So for example, if you have, say, your AirPods in and you need to record a quick, you know, audio message or voice memo, you can quickly go into your control center and change the audio input from AirPods to the built-in mic. And of course, naturally that will allow for a higher, you know, mic quality without actually having to put away your AirPods. So let's say that you've taken advantage of this and you've recorded some really good audio and video and you've thrown it into a Final Cut Pro for iPad Timeline. Well, in previous years, you would have to sit and wait for the Final Cut Pro app to render the timeline. But you know, thanks to iPadOS 26, you can now render these files in the background. And yes, that does mean that you can start and export on the Final Cut Pro for iPad app and leave the app, do other things on your iPad and come back later and it will have finished and you don't even have to like worry about that. So at this point, you've probably noticed that I haven't even talked about liquid glass. And that's because while it is cool, uh, this video's focus isn't really on the change design, but it's more so rather all the features which will help you get more done. But if you have stuck around this far, let's talk about the design for a moment because you know, Apple's headlining feature this year is definitely liquid glass. So what is liquid glass? <laughs> Well, liquid glass is essentially just Apple's updated design language, which is meant to reflect and refract light in such a way that it looks 3D and I, I mean liquid, but it is a little bit inconsistent uh, because the, the strength of this liquid glass does vary depending on what application you're in and what part of the software you're viewing. However, inside of Apple Music is definitely a good example of how liquid glass works because you can see as I'm sort of just scrolling, the words and colors are getting stretched as if it were like a form of real glass. But for whatever reason, the dark mode version of liquid glass is more clear, I guess you could say, whereas the light mode version almost appears just more frosted. But as you can see, just moving through the control center or looking at different updated app icons, Liquid Glass is definitely an updated, fresh design, which in my opinion, I felt like the OS needed because since iOS 7, it's just been flat, modernized. So it's nice to see some actual like big changes, you know? But hey, that's been it. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please remember to like, subscribe, and hit the bell as it helps me out a ton. As of recording this video, I am four subscribers away from a thousand. So if you see this, subscribe. I mean, that is the first massive milestone for me. I'm so thankful for how this channel's come along and I can't wait to continue to just grow it and build it uh, and share good content with you guys. But hope you enjoyed and I will see you guys in the next one. So yeah, bye guys.